You are forever. You are forever in my life. You see me through the seasons. Cover me with your hand and lead me in your righteousness. And I look to you and I, I wait on you. I'll sing. I'll sing to you, Lord, a hymn of love for your faithfulness to me. And I'm carried in everlasting arms. You'll never let me go. forever. You are forever in my life. You see, you see me through the seasons. Cover me with your hand and lead me in your righteousness. To you, I wait and I, I wait on you, and I'll sing to you, Lord, a hymn of love for your faithfulness to me, and I'll carry it everlasting.
our heads in prayer. Uh, Jesus, we thank you that through it all, Lord, um, you are here, Jesus. We thank you for uh, your faithfulness through every season, Jesus. I pray for uh, all the grads today that uh, whatever season that they're going to be jumping into, Jesus, that uh, you would just remind them that you are with them, Lord, and that you will, you will continue to be faithful, Jesus. And um, uh, we thank you so much uh, for the service, and um, we pray for your speaker that you just uh, guide him as he leads your people. And um, yeah, Jesus, we pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Sound check and uh, audio check. We did this earlier, so I assume it's all good. But uh, I am so uh, excited once again to be uh, with you uh, via Zoom, obviously. So thank you for having me today. It's an honor for me, as always. And uh, just uh, want to open this moment for us as we dive into the Word of God with a prayer. Uh, let's let's do that. Uh, Holy Spirit, come and help me how to uh, express the Father's heart for us in this uh, school of life. Thank you, Lord, for my uh, opportunity today to share your word. And as I always say, uh, and echo your word, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And today I can say I have neither might nor power, but I have the Holy Spirit. And that's, uh, I need your anointing as we study your word. No one can change our hearts, our minds, uh, the trajectory, the directions of our lives, only you. And so I cannot do anything apart from you. And so we ask that you transform us today uh, into the likeness of your son, Jesus, through your word. In Christ's name, amen. So after uh, I prayed, I think uh, it's time for me to share my screen. I'm going to share to you uh, a PowerPoint. I think that's going to make my uh, self smaller, but that's good. The School of Life, Psalm 73, 1 to 28, as was read earlier. Thank you so much. Um, but in a form of an introduction to this uh, study that we have of Psalm 20, uh, 73, let me uh, share to you a brief uh, story about uh, my experience as a teenager. So when I was a teenager, uh, this was uh, five years ago. No. <laughs> When I was a teenager, I had food poisoning. Uh, it was from eating a Whopper Junior. So I'm not going to describe to you uh, who, uh, what company that is, but uh, I had food poisoning just for eating that Whopper Junior. So it wasn't cooked properly, I, I think. I was hospitalized. And I uh, spent overnight in the hospital uh, to clear that poison uh, in my body, in my system. And so although I, it was not a near-death experience, uh, it created uh, something in me, a, a temporal and an eternal uh, perspectives on death. And uh, it reminded me of Adam and Eve. You know, Adam and Eve were created, uh, when they were created, they were created perfect. This means that they were created to live forever. Uh, so in other words, death was not in God's original plan of creation. And uh, for that reason, you know, God created the, uh, this world to uh, the earth uh, perfect. He said it, it's good. So God, uh, I imagine this, okay, that God populated the earth at that time with uh, vegetables. Uh, cauliflower, spinach, broccoli, all the green stuff uh, that people eat so that uh, Adam and Eve or man and woman would live long and healthy lives. And uh, then came our time today. Then, then came this uh, $2 cheeseburger. <laughs> 
And uh, as I always think about, then Satan say, would you like fries with that? And uh, man and woman would say, uh, supersize that, please. And, you know, I never had Whopper Jr. Uh, ever again. And then it made me realize I shouldn't have blamed that company or I shouldn't have blamed even uh, that uh, burger itself. I mean, that was an isolated uh, incident, uh, I suppose. Uh, I should have thought about this bigger picture uh, that the original problem actually came from the original sin of Adam and Eve. Because of their sin, uh, these pain and suffering and death came into our world. So I need to have this bigger perspective in life. But when bad things happen to me and to us, or it, when bad things come our way, we tend to only look at what we can see, and we lose sight of the bigger picture. And so this was the problem that confronted the writer of Psalm 73. So see, he was looking at this situation from a wrong vantage point. So Asaph was, because of that, he was ready to quit and walk away from God. Asaph, as soon as possible. Asaph looked at things not from an eternal perspective, but a, a temporal perspective. And so today, this text reminds us that we should not look life, look at life from a faulty human perspective, but from the perspective of God. So Psalm 73 teaches us that two perspectives in the school of life. Uh, and some of you may be looking at the uh, sermon handout. There are really two uh, things that we look at today, the earthly perspective and the heavenly perspective, or the temporal perspective and the eternal perspective. So the earthly perspective, we pick it up from verses 1 and 2. Let me read this again. God certainly is good to Israel. To those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped. So I highlighted my steps had almost slipped. I highlighted that um, because in this earthly perspective, in the school of life, from the earthly perspective, we will learn the lesson of what the principle is called, the, the slippery slope principle. What is that slippery slope principle? As Asap said, my steps had almost slipped. Now, the slippery slope principle is the idea, okay, or the course of action which lead to something an acceptable, wrong, or even disastrous idea, more, more uh, worse than it was. So for, give you an example, okay? A simple example is when a person tells a lie. Let's see, even it starts with a white lie. But a lie is a lie is a lie, right? So just one lie, and what will happen after that, so this is the slippery slope, is that he will or she will need to tell more lies to cover, to cover up the original lie. So one person thinks he needs to, uh, to say one lie, but in the future to cover up one lie, he needs or she needs to say more lies to uh, correct one lie at the beginning. That's the slippery slope principle. And, and I suppose advertiser, uh, advertisers uh, picked up on this, you know, when you see on TV that if you don't buy this product, 
you're going to end up uh, in this uh, situation in your life. So, uh, you know, in, in a using the slippery slope in a, a negative way to benefit. But in our way, we're going to use it in a positive way to help us understand the school of life from the earthly perspective. Uh, so let me uh, say this, that uh, as I've learned this, okay, that it is a slippery slope to envy the prosperity of the wicked. He says this in verse 3, for I was envious of the arrogant as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So in other words, Asaph almost lost it spiritually because he envied. Because the wicked, the sinful, uh, he sees uh, them as prosperous. And you know, it's like this story of uh, The Godfather, th that movie, right? Uh, this uh, father and son, Vito and Michael, Corleone. Um, some of you may have uh, remembered that, but uh, you know, they were violent men who died in their old age. But not only that, they're healthy. You know, they can eat, uh, you know, people can eat bacon and eggs every day <laughs> and live up to 90. You know, they die in their sleep. Life seems to be trouble free and life. As other would think, uh, that's not fair. So the slippery slope principle that it is a dangerous thing to envy the prosperity of the wicked is this verse reminds us that this, this view is from an earthly perspective. And so we need to watch out for that uh, thinking, for that mentality. Uh, here's the uh, second thing that we learned from Asap. It is a slippery slope to envy the painless life of the wicked. He says this in verses 4 to 5, For there are no pains in their death, and their belly is fat. They are not in trouble like other people, nor are they tormented together with the rest of mankind. You know, this is a slippery slope. Simply put, nobody knows the pain that people uh, go through. Okay, I mean, I can't. I, I in in pastoral care, I I visit people in ICU. I visit people on their deathbed, but in reality, I really don't know even uh, how painful it is or less painful their lives is. And so for those in healthcare, we know we, we try to make it uh, painless or at least lessen their free uh, for end of life care. But uh, still, we don't know, like the wicked, the sinful people, uh, which we think they are painless. We actually can't tell and we can't say for sure that life has been painless for them. And so this you know, this life appears painless and easy for them. But then again, from Asap's perspective, this is a worldly, uh, not a heavenly perspective. It, it is a temporal, not an eternal perspective. And this is why it is a slippery slope to envy the painless life of the wicked. Here's the third one we uh, learn in the school of life, that it is also a slippery slope to envy the arrogance of the wicked. Asap says this, therefore arrogance is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eye bulges from fatness. The imaginations of their heart overflow. You know, Asap looks closer and sees that the unbeliever had no need of God. And he sees that the people who are prosperous and the people who are who, who appears painless in their lives 
are also the people who are arrogant. But Asaph reminds us, be careful, watch out, because he learned in the school of life that, again, this is from a temporal and earthly perspective rather than eternal and um, heavenly or a heavenly perspective. Let me uh, give you an example why in life perspective matters. I mean, you, you hear stories like uh, 90% in life is all about our attitude, our perspective, and 10% is the actual uh, event in our lives. But uh, let me tell you the, uh, the idea of uh, how perspective changes uh, our lives. Uh, even in this story, let me uh, share to you this one woman. Her name is uh, Linda in the U.S. Linda went to supermarket, and this was in, uh, in the AP News. She went to the supermarket to buy uh, groceries. And, you know, several people noticed her. She was just sitting in her car. And the windows of her cars, her car are rolled up and her eyes are closed and both of her hands uh, at the back of her head. So she was covering something, the back of her head, and she wasn't moving. So one of the customers noticed this and so the customer went to the store, to the supermarket, and when she, when that customer went out, Linda was still doing the same thing. I mean, this is unusual. So then she, uh, this customer went to Linda, and uh, she asked Linda if she was okay, because he noticed that Linda's eyes. At the uh, when she when this customer went to the supermarket, Linda's eyes were closed, but now they're open. And so he went and asked how Linda is doing. And you know what Linda said? This is what she said: that uh, she'd been shot in the back of the head and had been holding her brain for over an hour. I mean, she was holding the back of her head, holding because she was holding the brain, her brain, because she had been shot for uh, over an hour. She'd been doing that. So the man called the paramedics because she wouldn't, you know, take her hands off from the back of her head to open, to roll the window. So the paramedics, when they came, uh, they had to break the window to, uh, to talk and to help uh, Linda. And so when they break, when they broke this window, uh, Linda still refused to move, and her hands still at the back of her head. So here's what happened, okay? So when they got in, the paramedics got in, they found that Linda had this wad of bread dough on the back of her head. So what happened was, a Pillsbury biscuit canister exploded from the heat. And it, it made, when the explosion happened, it made a loud noise that sounded like a gunshot. And the wad of dough hit her in the back of her head. And when she reached out to see and feel, she thought it was her brain. And so initially she passed out just from that. And after uh, a few moments, she woke up and recovered and tried to hold her brain for over an hour. And then when someone noticed, uh, came to that aid. So here's what I'm trying to say. Our per perception of reality always, always affects our response to reality. What happened was Linda lives in an environment where 
gunshots are more common than this exploding biscuit. So what happened was she thought she was shot and she thought her brain was falling off because it was a common thing where she lives. So I'm trying to say that perspective in life matters. So the human perspective is our response because we are human. But Asaf is teaching us today in the school of life that we need to remember that there is another perspective. And that perspective is called the heavenly perspective. So let's go through this. The heavenly perspective or the eternal perspective. Asaf never learned, okay, because he says this in the next verse, in verse 17. He never learned this perspective until he went to God, to his sanctuary, to his presence. So he says this, and I highlighted until. And so this is where the, uh, the transition of the text uh, takes place by this word, until. So he was bitter about life. He was bitter about uh, how the uh, the wicked are prosperous. You know, they are arrogant. They, uh, they are painless, seemingly painless, painless. And he, he had all these attitudes, this perspective. And then it says in verse 17, until I entered the sanctuary of God, then I perceived their end. You see, there's something happened that we need to uh, change our perspective in life. But that change will only take place once we come to God. Once we enter into this realization that life will never make sense unless God is part of our lives, even... Uh, as God is a part of our pain. See, I was just talking yesterday. Uh, in our church, we have uh, this outreach to our international students. Uh, there are so much, so many international students where I am, so I thought we'd just uh, have a ministry to help them uh, in their transition, as well as uh, foreign workers, temporary foreign, foreign workers. Uh, so we have this outreach to help them, uh, the pathways to immigrate, um, PR and uh, uh, all the other things, uh, work, finding jobs, transitions, all that stuff. And I was talking to someone there, and um, he's a father of three, who's, uh, his wife passed away, and uh, a breast cancer. And so this is this is real. This perspective, uh, earthly and heaven, uh, heavenly. This is real. And he says, he says this to me, that uh, his ch three children are bitter uh, against God for what happened. And I mean, this is real. We, we all go through all these things. And in, in the case of, in this case, his children are not even uh, calling God, attending church, or anything to do with God. And so this heavenly perspective, and so I'm hoping to do, there are two kinds of uh, people today that I can imagine as I prepare for this. Is One is someone who needs to change their perspective from the earthly perspective and the heavenly perspective. And the other one is uh, not necessarily to uh, to change, but uh, maybe even to switch. Maybe you don't even have this heavenly perspective. Uh, maybe all along you didn't know that there is another perspective. So some of us who may have these two perspectives at the beginning and realize uh, that's it for me. I have enough with this heavenly perspective, uh, this is a reminder for us, for both listeners. 
uh, that there is a hope, there is hope for us. So this is uh, the uh, lesson that Asap learned. What did he learn about uh, the heavenly perspective? Well, he says this, okay, he, he remembered, he says, we also need to remember that there is uh, this ruin of the wicked. He says this, you indeed put them on slippery ground, you drop them into ruin, how they are destroyed in a moment. They are utterly swept away by sudden terrors, like a dream when one awakes. Lord, when stirred, you will despise their image. You see, Asap learned that when we look at life with eternity in mind, that there is more to life than what we see here on earth. And so when we look at the perspective of, uh, of things from God, we will realize that uh, there is something bigger. Just like what I shared about my burger, uh, my, my Whopper Jr. Uh, food poisoning. Instead of looking from that small perspective, look at life from the bigger, from a bigger perspective. And that's what ASAP has learned. And that's what we can learn as well from this. Uh, another lesson that he learned as well is that remember the rewards of the righteous. The rewards that Asaph talks about is actually this. He says this, nevertheless, I am continually with you. This is uh, from God's uh, perspective, okay? You have taken hold of my right hand. You will guide me with your plan, and afterward, receive me to glory. Whom do I have in heaven but you? And with you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. This is the reward, the blessing of the righteous. What we have here is uh, the presence of God. See, when we're going through difficult times and we are only focusing on the earthly and the temporal perspective, and we switch or we change this perspective, or even we embrace this new perspective if we haven't had this perspective before, God promises for, uh, for, for his presence to be there. And in, in fact, Asap learned, he says, you know, whom do I have in heaven but you? And so this is, this verse, by the way, I remember very well because I don't know if you recall a story of, uh, uh, it was in, uh, on the news, missionaries from South Korea um, they did mission work in Afghanistan. There were, I think, 30 plus of them. And when they went to Afghanistan, uh, something happened to their mission. And uh, I know this story, uh, it was on the news, but it became personal to me because uh in in the course that I'm teaching here at uh, a college, uh, there were students uh, who did mission work in Afghanistan, Korean students, Korean international students uh, that I uh, met and uh, talked to. And uh, what happened was is that they were uh, they were captured. Uh, some the the leaders were killed. And uh, it was like a nightmare from uh, that perspective from the church and the mission work. And uh, I remember that one of the leaders uh, says this, he says, my flesh and my heart may fail, 
but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That's the perspective that this mission team took on. Despite of what happened, they said, you know, all my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So this is a reminder for us, and I keep reminding myself of this because, you know, if uh, you only know this, that someone I know who was 41 years old, I mean, he was a young pastor, someone I know. He loved and cared for his wife, provided for the kids. He watched what he ate, but at 41, he had a massive heart attack. While other people who abuse themselves live to see 80 years old. And even today, I still can't. If I look at that event from a human perspective, I still can't explain that to anybody. And as I visit people in a hospital and ICU, I, I don't have words. I can only have the assurance that say, God cares. He, he is close to the brokenhearted. And Asaph, you know, he, he says he envied people who get to live 80 and 90 years old and no pain in their lives, seemingly. And uh, what Asaph is trying to tell us was this, from the earthly perspective, he's, he says this, that, you know, he was not so much distressed by the sin of the successful. Okay? He wasn't focusing from an earthly perspective, he wasn't focusing on the sin. So he was not really distressed of the sin of the wicked. He was not distressed of the sin of the successful as he was distressed of the success of the sinful. You know, he was focusing more on the success of the sinful as opposed to the sin of the successful. And, uh, you know, but he says, this is from an earthly perspective. And I learned that there is another perspective that in the end, the sinful will come into ruin, and no matter how successful they are. And uh, those who see God from a heavenly perspective uh, will have this reward, the reward of the righteous. And, uh, it's, it's so difficult for us to explain things in life. Like, for example, in my area here in uh, uh, Metro Vancouver, there was a uh, four-year-old girl while feeding a horse. This is in Ladner, British Columbia. Some of you um, may know this area. Uh, while feeding the horse with her aunt, a, dunk, a drunk driver you know, hit and killed her, a four-year-old girl, and uh, injuring also uh, the aunt. But the driver of the car, the drunk driver, just a scratch, nothing, you know, nothing much, no pain, nothing. And when the court uh, proceeding uh, took place, and uh, at the end, that drunk driver, got 2.5 years in prison. He was sent, she was sentenced 2.5 years. I mean, I would, you know, probably remove the point in the middle of the decimal. And then you see stories in other places, like in Louisiana, you know, I, I read stories like someone killed a dog with a samurai sword and uh, sentenced to seven years. And then I, I think about where is justice? And then I realize justice will only make sense when viewed with eternity in mind. It's so difficult to explain the pain and suffering from the earthly perspective only. 
And so I love the uh, lesson that uh, Asap is teaching us. He says in verse 23, nevertheless, or uh, in other translation, yet. So after confessing that he was bitter uh, of the senseless and the arrogant, the, uh, the arrogance of the prosperity and the painless of the wicked, he recognizes that God has not cast him away. And he says, I'm always with you. You hold me by my right hand. So as we, uh, we end this, I want to sh share to you some reflections and applications from this lesson. And that number one is we need to let go of our envy. You see, Asap envy the, the arrogance of the wicked, the prosperity of the wicked, the painless life of the wicked. But today we are reminded we need to let go of envy in our lives. And this slippery slope principle and that advertisers may use is you know, getting into this part in our lives. Hey, I, I deserve this too. I work hard in my life. Uh, I need to buy this no matter what uh, will happen, no matter how uh, deep in death uh, I can get into. Uh, I also need this in my life. But the lesson today is we need to get rid of this envy in our lives. Here's the second uh, lesson also we learn from uh, from this and that is we need to let go of comparison you see when we compare things we compare our lives uh, whether it is uh, what we have and what we don't have when we compare our lives whether it is through our experiences the uh, the good times and the painful times, like how come I I have such a hard time in my life and my next next door neighbor who's not even a churchgoer or a Christian looks so happy and life seems so easy for my next door neighbor. Comparison. You know, we, we hear things, a uh, phrase like, you know, don't compare yourself. Uh, don't, uh, you know, uh, you you know compare yourself to the next door neighbor with the Joneses, um, and so this is one of the lessons we we'll learn, uh, applications we can learn uh, from Asa. We need to let go of this comparison in our lives. And here's the um, the last reflection or application: we need to trust that God is in control. We need to trust that God is in control. And this is not an easy thing to do, especially when life is difficult, when life seems bad. It's so hard to trust that God is in control. But this is one of the things that when we look at things from an earthly perspective and the heavenly perspective, when life on earth does not make sense, the only way to explain life from, is from God's perspective. It's so hard to do that unless we trust that God is in control. Why is that? Because, you know, we don't know what will happen to us down the road, even tomorrow or even next week. You know, all of us, that's why all of us know what it's like to be asked up at one point in our lives, because we envy uh, people, for example, who win the lottery. And we say, you know what, I, I wish it was me. Then I could have give 10% of that to my church. <laughs> We envy people who win, you know, 30 million, uh, who win a jackpot of uh, 1 billion. There's, uh, you know, somebody who won a billion. 
dollars. You know, we envy people and we, we wish that it was us. But then you read through what happened to people who won the lottery, okay? And you see the ruin of their lives, their family, their marriages, uh, everything. Because their life changes the moment they have this. I mean, all of a sudden, uh, your nephew you've never heard before, or a cousin or even uh, a stranger who says, hey, I'm your friend. Remember me? Uh, I heard you won the lottery. I really need your help right now. I'm in trouble. So all of a sudden, you have all these things. And we so we think that uh, God uh, is not fair because I, I'm a good person. I should have won. I should... My life should have been easier compared to that person. But we don't know. We don't have the perspective that is eternal. And the only way to change our perspective from an earthly to a heavenly, from a uh, temporal to eternal, is to trust that God knows what he is doing, to trust that God is sovereign, to trust that God is in control. And some of you perhaps feel like giving up. You know, from time to time, we have cares in our hearts. We carry this burden, this load in our lives, while other people's lives seem so easy. And we have to admit, you know, uh, today, this is one of the admission that we have to do, to say, God, I have looked at things. I have looked at life the wrong way. Today, I'm going to start trusting you and believing your word that truly you are in control. You see, the only way for us to change perspective or even to embrace this new perspective, if we haven't heard of this heavenly perspective, is to see God and to see this situation in our life from a bigger picture. Because only God can see the future. Only God knows what will happen next year or five years from now. We need to look at the big picture in life. And since only God can see ahead, we need to trust that God is in control and he knows what he is doing. Choose a heavenly perspective over earthly perspective. Choose the eternal over the temporal. This is the school of life according to Asa. FCC family, this is the word of God. So I hope this is a reminder for us, as it, it, is, it has been a reminder for me as well, to remember this other perspective when we go through difficult times, that's when we focus so much on this earthly perspective. Remember that God has another perspective in, in our lives. And Asaph is reminding us today, the school of life. Let me uh, pray as we close. As we close our eyes and bow our heads, let me just ask you this question. Where is God speaking to you from this verses or from this message? Where is God? What is, what is God saying to you today? And as I pray, I would like to ask God to help us to change perspective or to embrace this new perspective from God's point of view. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. And I pray for my FCC family, for my brothers and sisters, that this lesson that we have learned from your word, the school of life from Asap, I pray in the name of Jesus that my brothers and sisters who may be going through difficult times, that they will change this, uh, they will change perspective, they will embrace this perspective. And this is a reminder for us that because you are in control, we can trust you. And I pray for anyone here who may be uh, ready to give up or maybe Asap who wanted to quit on God. I pray in the name of Jesus. And as your word says, and I claim that with no weapon formed against us will prosper. We need, Lord Jesus, your protection over our mind. Help us to have the mind of Christ in this perspective in life. So, Father, I pray blessings for FCC family. Pray blessings for our families, our relationship, our marriages, for our health, for our children. Uh, as we celebrate those who are graduating, our graduates, I pray in the name of Jesus, that as they move on and whether uh, continue in their studies or uh, find work uh, in, the, in different areas of their uh, education, I pray in the name of Jesus that this reminder will always be with them, that in life uh, there is a godly perspective. I pray for that blessing for everyone in Christ's name. Amen. Redeemed by His grace, let 
house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Give a shout out your praise. 